This is another very substantial hit for people with mortgages. Those on variable rate mortgages will see them going up by between 25 and 30 quid a month per £100,000 of outstanding mortgage. And of course, then you have the huge bill shock that's going to come for anybody coming off a cheap fixed rate and the price is going to go up. Now, what we have to do is look at this in no uncertain terms and say that this isn't accidental. I mean, this is why bank, the Bank of England has put up interest rates. It does that in order to squeeze people's disposable income so that money is taken out of the economy to try and bring inflation down. And that's exactly what this does. One of the problems with it, though, is it is only tar targeting a very narrow group of people. In broad brush numbers, a third of the country rent, a third of the country have mortgages, and a third of the country own outright. So what you're trying to do is squeeze incomes, but you're having to squeeze substantially a small number of people. There is, of course, a substantial indirect impact on those who rent as well. Uh, and they're, they're hurting not just because of the knock-on effect of their landlord's mortgages, but also in those cases, energy and food prices tend to be a big part of disposable incomes too. So they're hurting as well. So, I mean, this is a very painful move by the Bank of England. And for those people in the most pain following this move, is there anything they can do? Well, I mean, if you're really struggling to not be able to pay your bills, you need to talk to your lender, and there are measures out there. You could extend your term, you could move to interest only, you can take a payment holiday. There's no guarantee your lender will allow you to do those things, but those are the type of forbearance deals that are available. For many people, though, um, we're now over the stress test limit. If you remember, when you got a remortgage um, or when you got your mortgage, they would have looked at whether you could afford a deal at 3 or 4% more than the interest rates. We're now at or beyond that limit for many people. So they will be at the brink of their budgets, but it will still just about be in the realms of affordability if they cut back on everything. And that's what this policy is intending for people to do. It's intending to try and get people to spend less money. So ultimately, it's very difficult to look at the help measures that are out there for those people who are just seeing substantial lifestyle curtailment. Once you go into the point where you're looking at arrears, defaults or repossession, that's the point that we need to make sure people are getting help. Because so far today, for example, we've had Labour say they do have a plan for, you know, helping people who are increasingly finding it difficult to pay their mortgage, but of course they're not in government. So far, we haven't heard much from the government about what they might be willing to do on this. Of course, it's my deep frustration that I raised the alarm on this in October last year. And I said we were heading for a mortgage ticking time bomb. That time bomb has now exploded. And I think they took their foot off the gas when rates didn't rise as high as they could have done in April. And that's the problem. We had the discussions then. And in fact, many of the plans for forbearance that Labour have come out with today are very similar to the plans I was proposing back then and similar to the plans the Chancellor was agreeing with back then. But we never got them put in action because I think people thought, well, it's not as bad as, it's not as, bad as it could have been. Well, it is that bad now. I really don't give a monkeys who makes it happen. We just need to make sure somebody makes it happen. Martin Lewis, thanks very much for speaking to us today. Cheers.